Have you ever had a dish that was so good, so satiating, that you wish afterwards you weren't so full? That you could start from the very beginning and enjoy every single delicious bite? Well, let me tell you, this is that dish. In fact, I've already made it twice this week and I am so excited to share it with you today. Let's get started. Step one in this dish is making a homemade teriyaki sauce. Now, teriyaki sauce would normally be reduced until it's more like a glaze, but today, this saucepan is gonna work double time because I'll be adding the ingredients to make the teriyaki marinade, and then later on reducing those ingredients to make a teriyaki sauce. So it's easier to clean up, and that's a good thing for everybody. The first ingredient will be some soy sauce. And soy sauce is really lovely because soy sauce acts as the salt in this dish. So you don't have to salt the chicken that we're gonna add later on. The soy sauce is gonna actually season the chicken as it's being marinated. In goes garlic and ginger. I'm also gonna add some granulated sugar. Right? That's what's gonna help sort of balance these flavors and also gonna make the glaze a little bit thicker and a little sweet at the very end. It's gonna be wonderful. And mirin. Mirin is a fermented rice cooking wine and you cannot have teriyaki sauce without mirin. So far so good. And then we're gonna swirl the pan until all of the sugar is in the solution, okay? Yeah, that looks pretty good. I don't see any more sugar granules, so now's a good time to add this chicken. What kind of chicken? Well, boneless, skinless chicken thighs work beautifully for this dish. I don't have to worry about them overcooking because it's a worked part of the chicken. You actually want it to get really, really hot, cook for a long time, somewhere between 170 and 190 degrees. And to you, that just means keep on cooking it. It's going to be more flavor and more tender as well. Now, speaking of tender, that little bit of ginger in there will act as a natural tenderizer. So we have tender, juicy, well flavored chicken. Give this a swirl. And it's wonderful because this is a passive way of giving your chicken this delicious, flavorful bath that's gonna make the overall dish that much better. <laughs> and that's it. So I'll push this chicken in the marinade off to the side and we'll get going with the rest of the dish. Now it is time to get this pilaf pilaf leg. The best way to start is a little bit of oil, but two tablespoons of two different types of oil. I have toasted sesame oil in my right hand, and I have a neutral oil uh, that would be like, well, right now it's grapeseed oil, um, canola oil would work as well. And the reason for that, if I used all of the toasted sesame oil, it would just be too strong. I want that lovely flavor of the sesame oil, but I don't want it to just overpower absolutely everything. The um, heat is about medium, and I have here one large shallot, thinly sliced. Hear that? Just the shh. It's like applause from afar. And then I also have a fair amount of ginger and garlic. And that goes in. And the purpose for this is just to build the flavors. I want the heat to release all the essential oils. I also want to get a little bit of caramelization and softening for the shallot. And let me tell you, when your friends and family walk in right now, they go, whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> what is that heavenly smell? And I'm gonna cook this for just about a minute. Now, what I'm looking for is just a little bit of breakdown for that shallot. And you'll even see a touch of caramelization in the bottom of the pot. Don't panic. That's where mushrooms come in to save the day. Now, the cool thing about mushrooms is as they cook down, they release a lot of water. In fact, mushrooms are mostly water. And as they cook, it actually helps pull up that fun, that caramelization, all that yummy flavor on the bottom of the pot, and all will be right in the world. This will take maybe five minutes. Okay, that looks great. Um, next, rice. What kind of rice? Jasmine rice. Jasmine rice has so much flavor, this lovely floral quality to it. And what you want to do is you want to rinse the rice until it runs the water, it runs kind of clear, that'll take about a minute, and let it dry in the colander um, until it's dry. And that way the rice will cook, 
but it will still be fluffy at the very end. And I'll cook this between two to three minutes. You'll see the rice start to pull up some of that liquid from the mushrooms, and all that flavor will be caught right inside the rice. Moving on. All the liquid has been absorbed by the rice, and it's starting to stick a little bit on the bottom, and that's okay, because that's just the starch coming out of the rice. That's a good sign. But now's the time to add some liquid. What kind of liquid? We're gonna go with chicken stock, and I also want to add a little bit of acidity, and that's going to be rice wine vinegar. Two tablespoons of that. Yeah. Stir this in. Okay, great. Now we add some sweet or white miso, about three tablespoons of this. A big lot. And that flavor just, you can't get it from anywhere else, this white miso. It doesn't overpower the dish. It keeps it nice and subtle. And the reason why I added that after the other ingredients is I didn't want it to boil. You never want the miso to really boil up front so it can be incorporated really well. We're building flavors on flavors on flavors. And now is the time to add some diced butternut squash, about two pounds. But once you peel it and pull all the seeds out, it's about a pound and a half. So if you buy already diced butternut squash, you're going for about a pound and a half. And I'll stir this up until it's all fully incorporated. I have leveled off the ingredients. And the reason for that is I want all of this yummy chicken, which has been marinating, if you remember, in this lovely teriyaki marinade that we made earlier, so that everything heats and cooks evenly. Just get all snuggly in there in one layer. And then what I'll do is wait for the whole thing to come to a simmer, because all this chicken can cool this stuff down. I want to make sure it all comes to just a simmer. That'll take about a minute. Put a lid on it in the oven. The oven's preset for 350, and I will cook that with the lid on for 20 minutes. 20 minutes is up, but for truly perfect rice, we're gonna let this sit with the lid on an additional 20 minutes. While the pilaf is resting, now is a good time to reduce that marinade into what is essentially a glaze. And I'm looking for somewhere between a third of a cup and a half a cup. If you overshoot it and it's too dry, it's okay to add more water to bring it back up to that perfect range. I mean, it smells amazing. If you remember that marinade that we had that we reduced into this beautiful teriyaki sauce, this goes over the top, right over the chicken. <laughs> it's just flavor on flavor on flavor. And it's nice and thick, just like a true teriyaki sauce should be. Oh, yeah. Mm. This has been cooking for a while, so you want to freshen it up just a bit, and that's where some thinly sliced green onions go into play, so that every bite gets some yummy, deep, rich, but fresh as well. And then some either uh, black or white sesame seeds, get a little punch of flavor, and also just the color. Presentation means a lot. Add those to the top. I mean, uh, if you've never felt like Picasso, when you make this, you'll feel like Picasso. Just step back and listen to the cherubs. Oh, just look at that. Look how beautiful that is. There is nothing quite like serving a beautiful family style dish, except for sampling a beautiful family style dish. Let's get on in there. That right there is an umami bomb. It is so lovely and savory. You have the chicken, of course. Uh, you have the soy sauce. You have the mushrooms that we cooked down. You also have that white sweet miso out of this world and the chicken stock that we used to cook the ingredients and that perfectly cooked rice, the jasmine rice. In. This is the reason why I chose to skip breakfast and have this for lunch. Will I have it for an afternoon snack? Yeah, most likely. Will I probably have it for dinner as well? Most definitely. No judgments. No judgments, right? This is a judgment-free zone. Don't mind if I do.